good morning dear students welcome to the class hope you all are safe and you are learning what is taught in your online classes in different subjects today we are going to discuss about impure substances but before moving on with today's topic let's quickly recap what we have discussed in the previous session in the previous session we have discussed about pure substances the characteristics of pure substances where you have learned that the pure substance has definite composition it has definite set of properties it has fixed melting and boiling point and also that pure substances cannot be separated by physical means then we have discussed about compounds the characteristics of compounds if we talk about compounds compounds are made up of two or more elements which are always combined in fixed ratio and compound is always made up of same elements which is combined together in fixed ratio for example water water is always combined in fixed ratio of 2 is to 1 by volume and by mass it is 1 is to 8 then we have discussed that compound is always homogeneous in nature why is it homogeneous in nature because all the molecules or elements present in the compound they are present in the same proportion throughout the content if we talk about water a glass of water contains many drops of water each drop of water will have the same compound h2o that is hydrogen and oxygen will be contained in it so that shows its homogeneity that is throughout the content it is the same molecules which are present then we have discussed that properties of a compound are different from its constituent elements that is the compound water which is formed by its constituent elements that is hydrogen and oxygen shows entirely different properties that is water is neither supporting burning nor it burns itself but when we talk about the constituent elements that is hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen it burns and oxygen it is supporter of burning so that shows the properties of a compound are entirely different from its constituent elements then we have also discussed that it is not possible to separate the different constituents of a compound by applying any physical means like filtration or distillation or sublimation different methods physical methods of separation are there applying any of these methods we cannot separate the different constituents of a compound then we have also discussed why do we regard water as a compound not a mixture the reason is water is always present it is always found in definite ratio and it shows homogeneous composition that means throughout the content it will show the same molecules then the other reason why do we regard it as a compound is the different constituents present in a compound cannot be separated by applying physical means but by applying only the chemical means we can get the different constituents of water then we have discussed that properties of water are entirely different from the properties of its constituent elements now today we are going to discuss about impure substance or mixtures well in the previous sessions you have come to know that matter is grouped into two that is pure substances and impure substances so in the last two sessions we have discussed about pure substances that is about elements and compounds we have discussed in detail but today we are going to discuss in detail about mixtures 
so here in this module you can see so many colorful pebbles they look different and yes they are different because their composition is different now looking in the next module you can see a variety of food stuff they all are made with different constituents but we call them as pure substance do we call them pure substance yes exactly we call them pure substance why do we call them pure substance because we can eat these substances they are pure in nature they are good for us so we can have it so we consider it pure substance but sometimes the substances which we commonly call pure substances are actually not pure from chemist's point of view here are some examples that will make your point clear that all these substances which we consider as pure substances are actually from a chemist's point of view are not pure they are impure substances the first example is we consider that clear water is not a pure substance why do we consider it because in tap water there is in addition to water small amounts of dissolved salts and also air is present within it the reason why the water has taste in it is just because of the salts present in it so now can you get the difference when we were talking about the compound water it was just a compound containing the co the two constituents that is hydrogen and oxygen but when we talk about normal tap water we say that it is not only the water which is present but with water there is dissolved salt and also air present in it so can we consider it as pure substance now i don't think so well we'll come to this point later let's see the second example here is the second example which shows milk and really we consider milk as pure substance but is it pure substance it contains fats carbohydrate carbohydrates proteins salts vitamins and water there are so many constituents present in it so can we regard it as pure substance and all these components which are present in milk they are present in varied proportion so can we consider it as pure substance because we have already discussed in the uh, uh, characteristics of pure substance that pure substance are always in definite proportion but here we don't find there is a definite proportion there is varied proportion so is it really a pure substance no let's see another example honey honey is also not a pure substance why because as you can see here a list of so many constituents is present over here it consists of fructose glucose water maltose high carbohydrates sucrose minerals vitamins and enzymes so there are a number of components present in it with different organic compounds so therefore we cannot regard it as a pure substance then another example is fruit juice fruit juice also can
cannot be regarded as a pure substance. Why? Because it contains sugar, minerals, salts and a number of organic compounds are also present in fruit juices as well. So we cannot regard it as a pure substance. Then the next example, the very common example which everyone is used to of is medicines. Medicines are generally made by mixing different substances in different proportions. And if I talk about crocin paracetamol, it also has a different composition in, uh, it has different substances present in it with different proportions. And this proportion also varies from company to company. There are so many companies which make these medicines. For example, Cipla is there, Cadilla is there, Baxter is there. So these companies, when they make such medicines, it is not that they, if they are making crocin or paracetamol, they'll be using the same composition, but the same composition will be used by all the companies. It varies. So then we cannot regard this also as a pure substance. So all these substances which we have discussed just now, all these examples which we have discussed, that is tap water, milk, honey, fruit juices, medicines, all these substances are not pure substances. Why? Because they contain two or more pure substances. Such substances are therefore called as impure substances or mixtures. As a matter of fact, almost all the substances which occur in nature are not pure substances but are mixtures. And to get the pure substances, we can prepare the pure substances from these naturally occurring mixtures by various physical methods. So, pure substances are rarely found on their own in nature. They usually mix to form mixtures. For example, we have discussed previously that a mixture is not a pure substance as it contains different substances which are not chemically combined together. There are so many examples around us. Air. Air is a mixture of gases. There are so many components present in it like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Just now we had, we are, you have seen the example of water. The ordinary water is a mixture of calcium and magnesium salts which give taste to the water and along with it there is presence of air. If we talk about seawater, seawater has a large number of salts present in it including the common salt, the table salt which we use as a flavoring agent. Then all soils, rocks and minerals are considered to be mixtures because there is presence of variety of substances in it. Plants and animals too are made up of mixtures of very complicated substances. All things which we eat raw or cooked are mixtures of a large number of substances like carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, salts, etc. Man has made many mixtures that are more useful than the pure substances. For example, alloys. Alloys are stronger than pure metals. What is an alloy? Alloy is a material prepared by fusing a metal 
with another metal or non metal and when these two are mixed together a metal with another non metal or a metal when these two are fused together and it is cooled down it gets converted into an alloy so this is a mixture other examples are jewelries of made of gold that is gold is alloyed for making the jewelries gold is alloyed with silver and copper then steel is another alloy which is made by mixing or fusing iron with carbon and manganese stainless steel is fused made by fusing nickel iron chromium and carbon together and brass is made by fusing copper with zinc there are other materials also which we find around us like cement cement is a mixture of compounds of calcium and aluminium these are very useful components for making the buildings then medicines soaps detergents fertilizers pesticides all of these substances which we use in our day to day lives they are mixtures they are impure substances so what is a mixture you have understood a mixture is not a pure substance as it contains different substances which are not chemically combined together a mixture consists of molecules of two or more substances that is elements and compounds or both in any proportion there is no definite proportion in case of mixtures they do not undergo any chemical change those constituents present in a mixture they do not undergo any chemical change they remain what they are now moving on with the characteristics of a mixture before move coming switching to the characteristics let's see the mixtures can be of different types a mixture can have two elements combined together that is here you can see the example of a mixture of two elements that is neon and hydrogen a mixture of these two gases can be made and both the components both the constituents will not chemically interact with each other why because they are not chemically bound or chemically combined why they are not chemically combined because we are not using any chemical means for its combination so a mixture can be of two elements a mixture can be made of one element and a compound also for example hydrogen and ammonia if both are mixed together it will form a mixture of hydrogen and ammonia it will not form any new substance because it is not undergoing any chemical change there is no chemical change taking place they are not chemically bond bonded together they will remain hydrogen and ammonia only then a mixture can have even two compounds also for example water vapor and carbon dioxide can anybody guess can you guess that where are these two components present around us yes exactly it is present in the air water vapor is also present and carbon dioxide is also present and this carbon dioxide and water vapor is used for different purposes water vapor is used by the plants and carbon dioxide is also used by the plants for the preparation of food water vapor is also helpful in the rain so these components which are present in the mixture they do not chemically react with each other they will remain in its same form
Now let's talk about the characteristics of a mixture. The constituents of a mixture may be present in any ratio or proportion. For example, in a mixture of salt and water, the amount of salt and water is not fixed. For example, if we take a glass of water and mix it, mix into it one spoon of one spoonful of salt, or maybe two spoons full of salt, or maybe three spoons full of salt. Each of these samples, if we make three samples, one with one spoon of one spoonful of salt, another with two spoons full of salt, and the third three with three spoons of salt. So all these samples will be called as mixture of salt and water. Though their proportion is varied, but it will be called the same. But the same is not the case with compounds. In case of compounds, it will always be in definite proportion that is water will always be formed in the ratio of 2 is to 1 2 atoms of hydrogen and 1 atom of oxygen then another property of mixtures is that mixture does not have any specific property of its own in a mixture each constituent exhibits its original property for example Pure oxygen supports burning and so does the oxygen present in air. Similarly, the taste of salt is salty on its own and it also tastes sal salty when it is mixed in water. So, the constituent's property remains the same. It exhibits its original property. Then, the third characteristic is that a mixture does not have a fixed melting or boiling point. For example, a mixture of a glass of water with one spoon of salt will have different boiling point. From the mixture of the same amount of water with five spoons full of salt. So that makes a difference. The boiling point of water with one spoon of salt in it, one spoonful of salt in it and the boiling point of water with five spoons full of salt in it will have different boiling point and also its melting point also will be different. So that means the mixtures they do not have fixed melting or boiling point. Then another property of mixture is the constituents of a mixture can be separated by simple physical means. For example, salt can be separated from iron dust. How can we separate? By simple physical method, if we use a magnet, a bar magnet, if bar magnet is brought near this mixture, the iron particles, the iron particles will get attracted towards the magnet and the salt particles will remain in the container. So, the constituents of a mixture remain chemically separate and no new substance is formed in case of mixtures. The constituents will remain in their original form and they will be separated only by their, by the physical means. Then another property of mixtures is that the components of a mixture coexist without chemically reacting with one another. For example, hydrogen mixes with oxygen. We have discussed about this example in the previous session also. We have discussed that hydrogen combines with oxygen without reacting with it. That means both the gases diffuses with each other unless and until a chemical mean was applied. A chemical reaction took place when this mixture was kindled, when it was heated. So when it was heated, what was formed? Droplets of water were formed. So, 
we say we consider that components of a mixture they coexist without chemically reacting with one another unless and until they are undergoing any chemical change by using by applying any chemical means then another property of mixtures is its homogeneity means a mixture can be homogeneous as well as it can be heterogeneous for example a mixture of common salt and charcoal is considered to be heterogeneous why do we consider it heterogeneous because there is visible difference between the constituents of the mixture whereas the mixture of salt and water is homogeneous in nature why do we consider it homogeneous because when salt is mixed in water we cannot see the visible difference in the solution we cannot see the salt particles in that water it is completely dissolved in it it is homogeneously distributed throughout the water throughout the content so this is a characteristic of mixture that the mixtures are homogeneous as well as heterogeneous in nature so let's revise what we have discussed about mixtures we have discussed that mixtures consists of two or more different elements or elements and compounds or compounds and compounds they are mixed together but they are not chemically combined together they do not undergo any chemical change then we have also discussed that a mixture can be homogeneous or non homogeneous that means it can be heterogeneous then we have also discussed that mixtures can be separated into its constituent or components by applying physical means like filtration distillation boiling different methods are there for separation of different components then we have also discussed that mixtures retain the properties of its constituent elements constituents component the components which are present in it the original property remains the same now let's move on to the kinds of mixtures mixtures are generally of two kinds homogeneous and heterogeneous so first let's talk about homogeneous mixture a mixture is said to be homogeneous if its constituents are uniformly mixed and it has the same properties throughout for example you can just see in this module it is showing a can it can be of cold drink no name is written of the cold drink it can be coca cola well i think the red color is for coca cola only coke and the other one shows the homemade lemon juice so in lemon juice throughout the content the complete glass which is containing that lemon juice shows the same composition we cannot differentiate between the where is the juice or where is the sugar molecule or where is water throughout the component throughout the mixture we find the same consistency the same composition so we call such mixtures as homogeneous mixtures let's take another example a solution of sugar in water or a solution of salt in water can be considered as homogeneous mixture because the components are uniformly mixed and we cannot see the different components present in it separately there is no visible difference in the different constituents present in it all samples of the solution have the same sugar water and lemon composition as you can see in this module it is showing the same composition and it 
is equally sweet it's not that if we take a drop of lemon uh, juice from the top or from the middle or from the bottom it will taste different throughout the solution we will find the same taste there are many other examples like air tap water sea water common salt solution blood in our body alloys like brass bronze stainless steel all these are examples of stainless uh, examples of homogeneous mixture then another type of mixture is heterogeneous mixture a mixture is said to be heterogeneous hetero means there is different constituents present and these are not uniformly distributed or mixed in the solution or in the mixture a mixture is said to be heterogeneous if its constituents are not uniformly mixed and it does not have the same properties throughout for example you can see here three examples are shown first one shows the different dry fruits kept together in this example we find if we take some dry fruits it's not that in that uh, content we will get all the different dry fruits in equal amount it will be different maybe the number of almonds may be more the cashews will be less so this shows visible difference in the constituents of the mixture present in them the different constituents which are present in this mixture so show visible difference of the constituents in another example also you see tricolor is visible orange white and golden color yellowish color so can we consider it as a homogeneous mixture no the different constituents which are present in this mixture they show visible difference in their composition in the third example where oil is put into water oil will never mix in water if we try mixing it then too it will not mix after some time after a few seconds or a minute you will find that all the drops of oil will come in the top layer so you can see the two layers of the different constituents oil will be in the top layer and beneath it will be the layer of water so you can see the visible difference in the two constituents present in this mixture there are several other examples a mixture of sand and common salt is a heterogeneous mixture the particles of sand and salt can be seen separately that is why there is a visible difference in the sand and salt sand and uh, salt particles so we consider it as a heterogeneous mixture because the components are not uniformly mixed throughout the mixture then if you select samples from different parts of the mixture you will find that some of the samples have more sand particles than salt while other samples may have more of the salt particles than the sand so this shows that in a heterogeneous mixture the constituents are not uniformly mixed and it does not have the same properties throughout now let's see the difference between mixtures and compounds when we talk about compound the composition of elements present in a compound is fixed as you have learned the composition of the elements hydrogen and oxygen in the compound water is fixed by volume it is 2 is to 1 and by mass it is 1 is to 8 and it always remains same wherever this compound will be found but when we talk about mixture 
the composition of the elements or compounds or molecules present in a mixture is not fixed it varies from place to place even if we talk about the example of air the compound uh, present in the air that is carbon dioxide the amount of carbon dioxide in the cities is more compared to countryside so that means the composition of air also varies from place to place in the city the com component is more the carbon dioxide content is more if we compare it with countryside the village side so that that is a difference it is not fixed then compound in compounds the properties of a compound are different from those of its elements i'll show i'll tell you the example of water only hydrogen and oxygen that make up water hydrogen burns oxygen supports burning but water which is formed is neither supporter of burning nor it itself burns so that means the properties of a compound are different from those of its constituent elements but when we talk about mixture it shows the properties of all its constituent elements whatever is the property of the each constituent present in the mixture it will be showing that particular property for example oxygen present in the air will show its property that it is useful for burning and also for respiration and wherever it is present it will be showing the same property then it uh, the compound say uh, shows that its constituents can be separated by chemical methods only by chemical means only and yes we have discussed in the previous session also that the components of water that is hydrogen and oxygen can be separated from water molecule in the water molecule only by applying chemical means what was the chemical mean applied when electric current is passed through acidulated water water will break down into its constituent elements that is hydrogen and oxygen but when we talk about mixture its constituents cannot be separated by physical method it can its constituents can be separated by physical methods here we cannot apply chemical methods for separation why do we do not uh, apply any chemical method for separating the mixtures because the constituents are present in their original form there is no chemical change taking place when a mixture is formed then a compound is always homogeneous in nature why is it homogeneous in nature because its composition is the same it's in it's always present in fixed ratio therefore it will be always homogeneous but when we talk about mixtures the mixtures can be homogeneous or it can be heterogeneous that depends or varies from mixtures to mixtures then let's move on to the conclusion what we have discussed in the last three sessions we have discussed about pure substances and impure substances that is mixtures in pure substances we have discussed about element elements and compounds where you have learned an element is a sub pure substance which cannot be split up into two or more simpler substances by chemical means but a compound can be separated by chemical means what is a compound a compound consists of a fixed number of different kinds of atoms chemically combined together and this fixed number is very very important that is it is always combining in fixed ratio and when we talk about mixture mixture is not a pure substance it is an impure substance as it contains a mixture of different substances which are not chemically combined together now comes the challenge time the question is 
is mineral water an element a mixture or a compound so the answer to it is mineral water is water that has either naturally or artificially added minerals and also water occurring in nature is present is having or is containing dissolved salts in it so we cannot consider this water as pure substance the mineral water is a mixture containing calcium magnesium sodium potassium or bicarbonate salts so mineral water is not a pure substance but a mixture another question for you is are you an element a mixture or a compound so the answer to it is our body is composed of so many different kinds of substances as you can see here there is a list of substances present here so what do you consider it are we an element a compound or a mixture looking at this we have in our body presence of oxygen carbon hydrogen nitrogen calcium phosphorus water around 62% protein is present around 16% potassium is present sulfur is present sodium is present calcium is present magnesium is present also fat is present minerals are present and around 1% of carbohydrate this is the elemental composition of the human body so with this we end up today's session hope to come again till then stay safe stay blessed god bless you